Hello and thank you everyone. Thank you so much for coming. So we are going to give um, another 30 seconds so that people can join and settle in. Uh, please make sure that, you, um, that you're muted so that we don't disturb um, the meeting. And then uh, towards the end of the meeting, we will have a Q&A session in which you guys can unmute yourself and you can ask, ask questions yourself if you want to. Um, so we're just gonna sit tight for a little bit and just give another 30 seconds for people to join. And if you would like to turn on your camera, we would love to see you today. Okay, so I think we are, um, we're just going to go ahead and, and start. So, uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming. We know that you guys are really, really busy during this time of the year. Uh, we are really happy that we can do this session today with all of you so that you can learn a little bit more about our Opportunity Scholarship uh, program here at the Dream by US. Um, so I do want to do a quick shout out to our uh, four different partner colleges. Um, so we do have a partnership with uh, Trinity Washington University, um, Eastern Connecticut State University, um, Delaware State and Christian Brothers University. So this is a really special program um, and it's only for certain students. Um, Sadana will go into the details in a little bit, uh, but thank you so much for coming. I do see people that are still joining. So I'm gonna start by introducing myself. So I am Camila Salkov, Operations Manager here at the Dream the US. I work in this program really closely um, with Hain and I am gonna let them introduce themselves too. So I'm gonna start with Sadana. Hey everyone, thank you very much for being with us. My name is Sadana Singh. I am Senior Communications Manager with the Dream.us and I'm also a former Dream.us scholarship recipient myself. So I'll have Hain do a quick intro of herself. Hi everyone, my name is Hain. I'm a Program Director here at the Dream.us and one of my roles is to oversee the Opportunity Scholarship Program. Okay, great. So um, now we're gonna go ahead and um, start by letting Sadana do a quick introduction. So she's gonna do an introduction section so that you guys can learn a little bit more about our program. All right, thank you, Camilla. I hope everyone can now see my screen. I'm sharing a quick presentation to give you a breakdown of what the Opportunity Scholarship Program is. Um, and so you'll have opportunity to ask questions about any of the things you see here in the presentation just drop it in the chat anytime or raise your hand. Camilla will field those questions and we'll, we'll get them answered. So to start, the Dream.us is the largest college access and success program for undocumented students in the country. We're very proud of this. Um, we currently have about 6,000 students um, enrolled or have graduated from our program. Um, and we have two programs a national scholarship program and the one that we're here to learn about today, the Opportunity Scholarship Program. So right now, the Opportunity Scholarship applications are open. They've been open since November 1st. That's the year we open, that's the date we open every year. Um, they close January 28th. So the reason that we're doing this sort of before everyone goes on the holidays is so that you are able to reach out to applicants or students or anyone that you know who may be eligible to get them to start a work, start to work on the application over the holiday break. We don't want them to wait till last minute to do it, but just so you know, this does go till January 28. And around mid-March is when the winners and awards are announced. So the Opportunity Scholarship, what does it mean? I'll tell you some background. I was an Opportunity Scholar before the program was ever invented. 
So I uh, immigrated to the state of Georgia where I was not able to have in-state tuition to any of the colleges. And not only that, I was barred from attending the top five universities in the state of Georgia because of my undocumented status. Even with DACA, Georgia did not accept undocumented students at the time into their colleges. Now, this was 2005. Um, I graduated high school, didn't really have anyone to talk to about my status, didn't really have a counselor or a teacher or advisor like yourself to really um, open up about my status and what I was going through and ask for the support I needed. So I was sort of left to my own devices. Um, I ended up learning about the dream.us 10 years after I graduated high school. And then I relocated from Georgia to go to college at Trinity Washington DC, which is one of the colleges you're, you're here from today. And I'll tell you this completely changed my life. And now we're hoping to do the same for many other students and applicants that you may know. So to qualify first, you have to be living in one of these locked out states. So you'll see them on this map right here. What this means is these states like Georgia, Georgia's listed here, does not give in-state tuition to dreamers and undocumented students. So we fill that gap by offering a scholarship up to $80,000 for completing a bachelor's degree over four years. Now with this, the $80,000 covers tuition, fees, housing, and meals for the student to relocate from their home state, one of these locked out states, to attend college at one of the four institutions you'll hear from today. Now, what are the colleges? As Camilla mentioned, they're Eastern Connecticut State University, Delaware State, Trinity, and Christian Brothers. Now, eligibility criteria apart from being living in one of these states. So you have to have graduated from a high school um, by the end of this 2020-21 academic year. So I guess by the end of the spring, 2021. Um, for your high school GPA, we're asking for a 2.8 or higher this year, along with many other college admissions, universities, we're making test scores optional. So the SAT or the ACT are not required for our scholarship application, but they may be required for um, some of the colleges still. I'm not sure, but they'll tell you more about that. Um, students cannot have been enrolled in a four-year university. So they can have already been enrolled at a four-year institution. They can certainly have community college classes. They can already be in a community college, but they can have already been in a four-year institution. Now they have to commit to relocating from their home state to attend college in one of our four other states in the fall of 2021. Now they must meet the DACA TPS or our eligibility criteria. So what does that mean? So it means that they, for DREAMers to apply for a scholarship, you can either have DACA or TPS status. Now, if you don't have those status, students can still apply. They have to have come to the country before November 1st, 2015. So five years ago, they had to have been in the United States. They had to have come before the age of 16 and graduated from a US high school or gotten a GED equivalent. So basically what you're seeing on the screen right now is the DACA criteria that was originally outlined in 2012. But what we've done for our purposes is we've changed that date of when you had to come from 2007 to 2015, November 1st. And why do we do this? So we realized that as the many years went by and we were offering the scholarship just to DACA and TPS recipients, we realized that a lot of younger dreamers and undocumented students were aging out of being able to apply for DACA because of that 2007 date. Um, so they would fit the other, the criteria listed here, you know, no criminal background, that kind of stuff but it's just the date. They probably came after 2007. So we're opening up our scholarship to catch all of those other dreamers who otherwise would have qualified for DACA. So for our purposes, the date is November 1st, 2015. And we can go over this again. You feel free to ask any questions. If this is not clear, happy to clear it up again. Now, what does the application look like? So this is an inside look at what the application would be for the student or applicant applying. So we're going to start with your name and email and things like that. We do not ask for addresses. 
We do not collect them. We do not mail anything out to our applicants or our scholars, and we don't want to have those addresses listed in case anyone comes knocking at our door. Um, next, we're obviously going to ask for your, you know, the PC that you want to attend, your high school information, transcripts, that kind of stuff, financial information. So this is how we determine your unmet need. Um, the scholarship usually is for low income. Um, college students, first generation, we know that uh, you have significant unmet financial need. Students, you know, that's why they need the scholarship. And so we are sort of asking for information to determine that. Now, what you see here, annual household income, the number of people supported by the income, number of dependents going to college on this income. The student does not have to provide any documents to show us this. It is all self-reported. So the entire application process is basically on the honor system. We're trusting the student and the applicant to give us the correct, honest, and true information. Um, so we're not collecting any IRS information. We're not collecting pay stubs. We do not ask for any of that documentation, but you will, the student will need to, you know, have these numbers ready um, when they're going to fill out the application so that they're able to give us the correct information. Now, uh, we do reserve the right upon later if the student is awarded and we find out that there's a mistake they made on the application or they lied, we do have the right to revoke the scholarship. So please keep that in mind um, when coaching students or applicants that honesty is the best policy here um, and then it could win you $80,000. Um, and next, responsibilities is an important part of the application. So. As of with regular college admissions, they want to know about extracurriculars, your volunteer, your community service, that kind of stuff. We understand that dreamers um, often have um, a lot of other home responsibilities and they're not able to partake in volunteerism or community service as a normal American student would be able to. We realize that dreamers and undocumented students often, you know, have the only driver's license in their family. So they're driving their parents to work. They're getting themselves to school, to work, that kind of stuff. We realize they may be taking care of siblings, younger siblings. Um, they may be helping out with the rent and bills and things like that. So we want them to share that. We want them to tell us everything that they're doing at home. We want them to let us know what all that uh, they're helping their family out with. It may not be something you think, oh, I'm going to put that I'm, you know, I drive my mom to work on my college application, but really we do want to know that because we know that dreamers and undocumented students are, you know, living in unique situations where they may not have extracurricular activities at school because they have these other responsibilities at home. Um, next and most important part of the application is our essays. So we do ask for two essays, 750 words each. There you see topic one and topic two. And once the applicant gets into our application online, they actually get questions that prompt them under each of these topics. So they get some guidance there. And what we wanna do, uh, the message we would wanna send out today about the application is focus on the essays. The essays are a chance for the applicant, for the students to tell us who they are, why they wanna to go to college, why does getting a degree mean so much to them? What obstacles have they overcome to get where they are? What obstacles are they still trying to overcome? We want to know all of this stuff because it gives us a full picture of who the student is. Now, going back to the GPA, our GPA requirement is a 2.8 or higher. Now, if someone's right at 2.8 and they are thinking, oh, why should I bother? Um, I'm right at the, the cutoff. You know, there may be like 3.0s and over and all of this stuff. I would say that a person with 2.8 and a stellar essay can get the scholarship over a person with a 4.0 and maybe they didn't put that much effort into the essay. So the essays are very, very key. We often tell students and applicants to start the essays early, um, make sure they have, you know, three or four people, read it over for them, give them feedback and have it go through several editing processes. The essays are definitely not something they want to leave for last minute as we know students do. So what does the timeline look like? So uh, once the application closes January 28th, we work with an organization called ISTS. 
Now, the application that the student is submitting to the Dream Not US also serves as their application to their chosen partner college. So for example, if I were applying to the Opportunity Scholarship to attend Trinity, I'm only completing the Dream Not US application. What ISTS does is they review these applications for eligibility and they then pass it on to the partner colleges to then review. Late February, the Opportunity Colleges confirm the applicants have applied and they meet the criteria to be admitted. And then early March is when we send out those wonderful announcements that change lives. So we do have something available on our website. Um, perhaps Camilla or Hayne, you can drop this in the chat if you haven't yet. We have Opportunity Scholarship Guidelines. And what this is, is a step-by-step -step process for students and you to go through together in one, determining the student's eligibility, how to complete the application, how to submit you know, transcript documents or things that we ask for, how to monitor the status of the application. So this guide is really the thing you should start with first. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're, you know that it exists. It will help very easily in you know, first determining everything you need to start the application and then step-by-step -step how to complete it. <clears throat> so I'll skip this one for later, but I'll pause right now for questions. If any have come in about all of the stuff I just went through, I know it was probably a lot. Um, so please let me know if there's anything I can clarify. Um, if anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, definitely feel free to do that. Um, Kelsey, would you like to out ask the question yourself or would you like me to read it? So I'll go ahead and read the question. Uh, Kelsey just asked, how many students do you accept? All right, and I'll have Hayne take that one actually. Sure. So uh, historically, it's been different round to round. When we started this program in 2016, 2017, it was more of a pilot cohort. So we started with 76 opportunity scholars. And since then, we've had one, two, three, four more rounds. We've had awarded just about 175 for the last uh, for the subsequent couple of rounds. And then we thought the program was going to end in 2018, 2019 but we've reopened the round so, round, so we really wanna get the word out there. I think this year, because our funds are starting to wind down, we will be doing a much smaller cohort. So uh, we are looking to award about 50 students for this application round, although that may change. So just as a heads up, last year we had thought that we would award around 75 awards, but because of the number of applications that came in, we actually ended up awarding about 130. So um, we're saying conservatively 50, but again, depending on how many applications we get, that number may change. Um, I have a question. Is the 2.8 GPA weighted or unweighted? That's a good question. I feel like that is for Elena, but we collect both. So in the application, students will be asked uh, for weighted and unweighted. All right, so, um, so we are gonna have a quick Q&A after we introduce our admissions people or points of contact from each uni university. Uh, so we do have our partner, someone representing our partner colleges here today. So you can hear a little more information from them. So first we're gonna start with Sierra uh, from Eastern Connecticut. Sierra, uh, would you like to do a quick introduction? Yes, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Just wanna make sure, thank you. <laughs> I got kicked off through the internet earlier, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm good to go. So hello everyone, my name is Sierra Colon. I am one of the admissions counselors at Eastern Connecticut State University, and I'm specifically the go-to person um, for students who are applying for the Opportunity Scholarship. So any questions that they have about filling out the scholarship about Eastern, as well, especially as they start to select what are their top choices, I'm their first go-to person here. Um, and I also just make sure that they fully understand the scholarship that makes sense for them. Um, if their parents have any questions that they would like to visit campus, again, I'm really that first go-to person for them. Once students decide to attend Eastern, then they get to um, connect with Maribel Sanchez, who is on this call, who is the incredible advisor for the, um, all our Opportunity Scholars here on campus. 
um, just to sincerely make sure that students are doing well in all aspects of their time here at Eastern, academically, socially, mentally, emotionally, um, and really just making sure that students um, are, are doing what they have to do and that we see them through through graduation. Um, and then also gra um, after graduation, so making sure that we're supporting them and their future endeavors and their goals. Um, so though there's me, then there's Maribel Sanchez as well, and we have each other on speed dial. Um, a little bit about Eastern quickly. So Eastern is located in Willamette, Connecticut, which is a rural town in um, Connecticut, which is about 40 minutes from Hartford, um, which is our capital. Um, though we are a small to medium sized university, we have about 4,100 undergraduate students. Um, I know um, when I was a student here, I did graduate from Eastern. Eastern did become my home away from home. Um, so the majority of our students do live on campus and they um, complete incredible um, aspects um, here on campus that have to do with their academic and social endeavors. Um, so I have a little bit of notes here just to make sure I'm hitting all of my main points. Um, so Eastern is also Connecticut's only public liberal arts university. So meaning we prepare for our students for their future goals um, and endeavors through practical hands-on experiences inside and outside the classroom and making sure that our students are learning from new perspectives, new ideas, thinking outside the box and just being lifelong learners. Um, we have been voted as a top ranked public regional university in New England um, for 2019 and 2020. And this does have to do with a mix of the academic rigor we provide and the social aspect as well. Um, our students do graduate in four years at twice the national rate of institutions of similar size across the United States, all while the majority of our students living here on campus. Um, so a little bit more about academics. We offer 41 different majors, 59 different minors, 60 different concentrations, and our majors do range from accounting all the way to women's studies. So there's typically something here on campus for everyone, and our students can really build a curriculum that makes sense for them and their future goals. Um, our average class size is around 22 students per class, and 79% of our classes have fewer than 29 or fewer students within those classes. Um, and this is across all disciplines as well, and across their time here at Eastern. We also have about 15 to one student to faculty ratio, um, and we do not have teachers assistants teaching our courses. Students are being taught and graded by their professors. However, they're always connected with peer mentors as well and upperclassmen to really help you know, show them the ropes. Um, and 98% of our teaching faculty have uh, the highest degree in this field that they're teaching in. So I always appreciated my classroom sizes, how hands-on my professors were, and how I really got to engage within the classroom and push myself academically as well and get outside of my comfort zone. Um, socially, we have 90 plus clubs and organizations students can join. That's a huge thing on our campus. Everyone's involved with something. Um, I was part of the organization of Latin American students all four years. And again, that really helped me connect with other students here on campus. And our scholars are really um, joining our clubs and organizations, whether they're social, whether they're academic, again, whatever really makes them feel connected here on campus. Um, we have about 2,500 events that take place throughout the year. So whether that's happening on campus, off campus, during the weekdays, during the weekends, always giving students something to do, experiencing their time here on campus, but you know, within Connecticut and within New England as well, making sure that they're feeling comfortable um, and connecting with other students here on campus. We do offer student employment for our students um, and really making sure that our opportunity scholars do have access to jobs right here on campus um, and um, plenty of opportunities to complete their community service requirement as well. Um, last but not least, we do have 14 residence halls available for students. So like I said, majority of our students live on campus all four years. I know I did. I loved it. I missed it. <laughs> um, but we do have 14 residence halls available for students during their time here. And they range from traditional style to apartment style and suite style too. Um, in regards to the application process, so for us, our average GPA is 3.4 and average um, SAT scores range from 1020 to 1190. But we also look at the ACTs, and those ranges are from 19 to 24. Again, these are all averages. We really take a deep dive into the student's application, really want to know more about them, why they're applying for the scholarship, why um, this institution might be a good fit for them, um, and really making sure that we can provide all the opportunities available for our students. Um, and we are test optional as well. And so I hope that covers everything. I tried to make it quick. Thank you so much, Sierra. That was great. Um, so now I'm going to introduce my own um, school. So I am also a scholarship recipient. I was awarded the national uh, scholarship. I am from Maryland. So I went to Trinity Washington University and I have the pleasure to have Ms. Iris here with us. Uh, Ms. Iris, will you be able to do a quick introduction of Trinity? 
Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Camila, Sadana. Um, like the both of them, I'm also a Trinity graduate. And just to introduce myself, Iris Vargas, <laughs> uh, Executive Director of the Office of Admissions at Trinity Washington University. I'm going to try to share my screen um, to show you a presentation. Um, let's see here, share very quickly. I think this is an easier way of doing it. So Trinity Washington University is located in Washington, DC. We were founded in 1897 by the Sisters of Notre Dame anymore. We are the first, uh, one of the first colleges for women in the country and the first in the Washington, DC area. Again, we're located in the heart of Washington, DC and we have a 15 to one student ratio. Um, and Trinity is very special to myself, obviously, and all of the students who graduate from Trinity because we are an all-women's college and we understand the challenges that students go through um, in trying to obtain a higher ed education. And so we cater to, to women, obviously, women of color uh, who wish to study and advance themselves for their family, for themselves. So in... Um, the screen here, you'll see the different majors. We have over 20 different majors that you can share with your students from biochemistry to political science. Obviously we're in D Washington DC, so that's a very popular major. History, um, education, just a little different uh, different majors for, for folks. We also offer academic resources, uh, tutoring. We have a writing center. We have study abroad opportunities. Um, we offer internships in most of our majors. And this is obviously very helpful for students when they join the workforce because they have experience in the field of, of study. We have a disability support services. We are uh, we partner with the DC Consortium, so students can take classes at other DC universities without having to pay their tuition and um, without having to apply to their university as long as they um, are a student at Trinity Washington University. We offer career advising, um, which is very helpful for students. On the screen, you'll also see our residence hall. We have one residence hall for our first year students, which is Coovley Hall. And obviously, you know, the perks of living on campus is that they're accessible to our campus. They um, are there with other students. They are able to build a strong bond with our other Trinity sisters, which is very helpful. Um, so I actually didn't have the opportunity to live on campus, but I know Sadana did. So um, if anyone wants to know how that is at Trinity, reach out to Sadana. Uh, we offer Division Three. We are Division Three for sports. We offer basketball, soccer, tennis, volleyball, softball, um, and that's a picture of our center there. We have many different clubs and organizations that students can join as well. Um, and these are a couple of students on our campus. So I would like to quickly just share um, Alaya Eastman, who is a Parkland survivor. If you all remember the shooting down in Florida a couple years ago, um, this student comes uh, to Trinity from uh, Florida. And so just to share the type of students that we have on our campus, they're very passionate about, you know, where they come from, the different experiences that they have. And um, she is particularly uh, very interested in ending gun, gun violence, obviously. So she obviously uh, is organizer of Concerned Citizens of Washington, DC, and is very involved. We have many students that are very involved in uh, different things that they are passionate about. So the application process, what we do, like Sadana mentioned, uh, students apply to the dream.us and they submit all of their application documents to them. We then download all this information into our systems and we reach out to the student if we have any particular questions, but um, we are looking for a student that has at least a 2.8 cumulative GPA. And uh, this is weighted. I know that question came up. This is weighted. We look at the essay. We look at all the information that the student shares with us in order to make a decision of uh, which student we will admit into our university. We are SAT, ACT optional, not required. So if the student has not taken it, it's totally fine. Uh, we look at the official transcript from high school and like I already mentioned, the personal statement. Um, as far as scholarships, we are obviously are a partner with the dream.us. So the additional portion that the scholarship does not cover, Trinity will uh, supplement with our own scholarships. So essentially the student comes to Trinity without having to pay any additional fees. The only uh, fee, if you will, that they do have to pay for is their transportation from their home state to our university. And obviously when they go home for the different breaks, they will have to um, you know, come up with, with that uh, money there. 
In this last slide, this is um, my team for the undergraduate um, office here. My email is on there if anyone has any additional questions. Um, I will also send a link for a virtual tour that we have on YouTube down in the chat um, if anyone has any questions for us. Thank you so much, Ms. Iris. Um, and now we are gonna go ahead and move on to uh, CVU. So we have Jaira here. Uh, she will be able to talk about that specific school too. And it, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, please put it in the chat box or wait a little bit after we're done introducing each one of the institutions. Uh, we'll give you a chance to unmute yourself and you can ask questions yourselves too. So Jaira. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jaira Jones and I'm an admissions counselor at Christian Brothers University. I'm so excited to share some information with you all about CBU. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, I have to, um, Iris, can you stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's try it now. Can everyone see this PowerPoint? Awesome. So CBU is a small private institution located in Midtown Memphis. We are a Catholic institution and more specifically, we are a LaSallean institution. So we were founded upon the values of faith, community and service. And you really see that within our student body. Um, our total enrollment, oops, oops, here we go. Can you see that slide? Awesome. So our total enrollment is 1800. So that includes our students who participate in our College of Adult Professional Studies program, as well as our um, graduate students. So for our traditional students, that population is around 1200. Our largest class size is 36, and that's more for those general courses that are required coming in. Our average class size is 18. So our students really get the opportunity to get to know their professors and receive any individualized support and attention that they may need. We offer um, 41 majors. And though we are a small institution, we are diverse. So we have students from 29 countries. 29% of our population is Catholic and we do offer mass for our students. And 43% of our campus are minority students as well. So we have four academic schools, which includes arts, business, engineering, and science. So for our students who are interested in the arts, we have a cognitive neuroscience lab for our psychology students and our students who major in studio art will receive their own art studio during their senior year. Our School of Business um, is currently working on expanding our many concentrations into majors. All students within the School of Business do complete internships before they graduate, which often helps um, them find full-time positions after graduation. For our School of Engineering, we offer four, we offer majors for the four main disciplines, which are chemical, civil, electrical, and en mechanical engineering. So within each of those disciplines, we do offer the highest level of accreditation for those engineering um, majors, which are, which is from ABET. All of our labs are taught by professors and students can begin working in our labs as early as freshman year. We also participate in rank high in various competitions each year, such as the Concrete Canoe competition and the Steel Bridge competition with other nearby colleges. And students can begin participating in those competitions as early as freshman year, so they're really getting that hands-on experience. Our School of Science is one of our largest um, schools here at CBU. We recently began a nursing program that's very popular. Um, Memphis is also a great place for students who are looking to go into the healthcare field. So our location is very close to multiple of the city's largest um, hospitals, such as St. Jude's Children's Hospital and the Methodist University Hospital as well. So our students often have the opportunity to shadow healthcare professionals and find job opportunities at local hospitals and clinics. We have a wonderful career services office here at CBU that works with our students across all four schools and they host at least two events per year where students have the opportunities to meet with various employers. 
from different fields. They also do a great job with connecting students with internship opportunities, as well as helping them find jobs before they graduate from CBU. So here at CBU, we do want our students to be academically strong as well as well-rounded individuals. So we offer over 60 clubs and organizations, including student government, honor societies, um, religious clubs, as well as Greek life. We also offer D2 sports as well and intramural, sp intramural sports for those students who are interested um, in those. So one cool thing about CBU is that if a student comes to CBU and there's something that they're passionate about that we do not have on campus, they can get with a group of friends and they can create that club and leave their mark on CBU's campus. The students may apply um, directly through our website. If they are interested, I know with the Opportunity Scholarship, they apply directly through the dream.us website. So for our um, requirements, we do require a 2.5 unweighted GPA and a 21 a, or 3.0 GPA and an 18 ACT score. Um, and we also do offer a test optional route as well that requires a 2.7 unweighted GPA. 100% of our students receive a merit-based scholarship and that ranges from $9,000 to $18,000 a year. Um, on our admissions team, we have two, two of us, we work specifically with Dreamer students. So we have myself and we also have Fatima Escobar. So we both are willing to answer any questions. Um, we are also bilingual, so we are willing to speak with any parents who are um, native Spanish speakers and answer any questions that they have as well. So we're currently hosting virtual visits as well as um, visits on campus and students are awarded a visit grant in the amount of $1,000 if they do visit. So if you have any questions, I will leave my um, email in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jairus. That was great. That was so informative. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, again, for the ones that are still here. Um, so last but not least, uh, we want to introduce our last um, partner college, which is Delaware State University. So from Delaware State, State, sorry, I have Kevin here. Uh, Kevin, would you like to introduce yourself and Delaware State? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Kevin Noriega. I'm the director for the Opportunity Scholars Program at Delaware State University. And I will be the one that you'll be dealing with, unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to look at it. Uh, to all of your concerns and challenges when it comes to um, getting acclimated um, and coming to the Delaware State University campus, I do see one of my good friends of mine from the admissions process, Ms. Kanisha. So I'm going to do my own spill, but then I will pass it over to her. Um, but I'm going to be your scholar advisor at Delaware State University. We have so many support systems uh, for our undocumented students. Our, our partnership with the Dream.us has started back in the fall 2016 with only 34 Dreamers, and we have grown to, to have 142 so far. The program has done tremendously with a retention rate of 98% and an average cumulative GPA of uh, 3.4. And that's because I will be breathing on your necks. Yes, you, you, you heard that right. I'm very huge on the academic development, the professional development, uh, and more so your, your personal development, your motivation, your, your inspiration, your, your financial development that you need and that you will need to develop throughout the four years or your, your, your tenure at DSU. There are, like I said, there are a lot of support systems at DSU. One major one is uh, um, I was able to create the, um, a Dreamer Success account, which is an account under the Delaware State University Foundation that is considered a 501c3 organization. And with the funds uh, that I gather from there through presentation throughout the state of Delaware, uh, not only to increase resources for you guys, for, for Dreamers, but also uh, to increase awareness throughout the state and across the nation. But I've been able to collect approximately a little bit over twenty thousand dollars, and I've been—I've I've used them all. I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, I'm completely depleted because uh, I've been able to pay for DACA renewal fees. I've been able to pay for down payments for internships when they don't have money to stay at an apartment, uh, professional development, uh, networking events, uh, any academic expenses. You know, books and access codes are not cheap at all. Uh, but I want you to know that you do have the support financially, not only for myself and the account, but also for from any university stakeholder uh, at, at Delaware State University. 
You also have um, your academic services, such as the writing studio, the mentoring program, tutoring services. Uh, you have peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. Uh, I'm also working on incre increasing the jobs opportunity for Dreamers on campus. And since fall 2016, it has increased uh, significantly. Um, and of course, the same way that I do presentations throughout the state of Delaware, I do presentations uh, throughout the campus, just so every member of the university, and I'm not, I'm not talking about just the faculty and, and the staff, uh, but also the, the, the Dover community, when located in, in Dover, Delaware, um, as well as the administrators at the university, they know how to effectively interact and engage with you guys. And I think more importantly, support, right? Because you guys are opportunity scholars. So you come from all these 13 locked out states. So you're enjoying home, right? Enjoying your family. And then you just drop off here in Dover, Delaware. And you're like, okay, what do I do? So I want to make sure that every aspect of your college career, not only the academics, is being taken care of in, a, in, a, um, in an effective manner. So um, I hope that um, you take the time to navigate our website. Um, like I said before, the support system is there, even from the government officials. Um, fortunately, all of my dreamers have been able to meet um, excellent government uh, officials for the state of Delaware. Uh, Congresswoman Lisa Blon Rochester, Senator Carper, Senator Markel, um, uh, Governor, uh, Governor Carney, um, Senator Coons, and they have been able to convey the support towards the dreamers throughout the state of Delaware. So you have nothing to worry about. I know you're coming from hours and hours away from home, but you have nothing to worry about here. You have the support from the student body, the faculty and the staff and administrators at Delaware State University. And I'm, I'm, I'm an immigrant myself. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a dreamer, but I came from Venezuela at the age of 19. Um, here to, to the United States, and I landed at, at Delaware State University, and I've been here since then, and, and the love and support that they have provided me, I could have never thanked them enough um, for, in addition to my hard work and my determination, they have given me the opportunity to be where, where I am right now. Now, we'll stop talking because I, I can't continue, and Camila and Hayne, they know I can talk for hours. I will pass it over to my good friend, Kanisha, and she will speak to you a little bit about the, the um, admissions process. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, Kevin. And of course, we all do appreciate you and all your hard work that you do. Um, I am gonna share my screen just to provide some additional slides uh, information that we want to share. So I actually want to, um, do this video for you guys. Of course, the little thing is in front, so <laughs> give me some time so I can let that hide. Um, I'm going to um, just share a video. Um, it's a commercial of Delaware State University. Um, it has been going um, virtual, of course, but if you have not had the opportunity to see it, please take a look at it now. Um, and I hope everyone can hear the video. Please let me know if you cannot. I believe the volume is a little low. You're muted. You said the volume's low? Yeah. Um, I feel the same way as well. I'm not sure what is going on. My It's up 100%, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so this is our commercial that has been going um, viral across the country. So again, I hope everyone did have the chance to see it um, on TV, but if not, you can always um, go on YouTube and check it out as well. Um, this is a link to our view book and it just provides wonderful information about Delaware State University. Um, obviously, as Mr. Kevin stated, we are located in Dover, Delaware, which is the capital of Delaware. Um, so we are very close to a lot of um, States, So we're about an hour and a half away from Philadelphia, DC, um, New Jersey, 
Baltimore, as well as two hours away from two and a half hours away from New York and um, other states like that. So um, what's also great is that we are also located uh, an hour and a half away from two major airports, which is going to be the Philadelphia International Airport as well as the BWI. So uh, students do have access always to go home and to see their families. Um, it also talks about how many organizations we have on campus, which is over 100. And of course, if we don't have an organization um, designed for you or a student would like to create one, they definitely do have that opportunity to do that as well. Um, we are a division one institution. So that does mean that we play with the big leagues, but of course we have to get there, of course. <laughs> Uh, no, no comment on that. Um, but yes, everyone does have the opportunity and a chance to join that. We have an amazing band. Um, I also graduated from Delaware State University and was a part of the band. So it's just another way to have an a internal family connection um, with that as well. Um, so I definitely can drop that link uh, for our view book. Again, it has wonderful details. It definitely talks about our majors and minors that we have. So we have over 40 majors, um, over 30 minors. So it's definitely something available for everyone. We have um, business, nursing, aviation, um, political science, fashion merchandising, um, criminal justice. So again, it's definitely something for everyone here at Delaware State University. And I know you guys said that you cannot really hear the video, but um, you can definitely just see how our campus looks. And Tanisha, also for uh, uh, all the students that are on the call, I definitely dropped the Delaware State University view book in the chat. Yeah, I don't think we're able to really hear the video. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Sure, we're not really able to hear the video. Okay, it was little. just um, a video just pretty much like showing our campus, um, our wonderful buildings that we have. We actually just built a new dormitory last year, which is super amazing. And I'm so jealous I was not able to stay there. Um, but shout out to all the new students who actually are. Um, but we have a beautiful campus. Um, our motto is it all matters because it truly does. And we truly believe that everyone deserves an equal and fair opportunity out of education. So despite your situation, despite um, your age, your background, anything of that nature, you definitely have a place here at Delaware State University with us. And everyone's goal on campus, as well as your peers, um, the staff, your academic party, everyone's goal is to ensure that everyone graduates within four years. Um, we have an amazing career service that um, also reaches out to all the students to ensure that they have a correct resume. Um, we have major partnerships with a lot of in, um, major companies. I can just name a few. The NFL, we um, have a partnership with BET, um, NASA. So the list again goes on. We have um, just an outstanding um, list of opportunities for all types of students and we just um, provide that information and I'm not sure if everyone was aware but we actually just recently acquired Wesley College. We are the first HBCU to actually acquire a non-HBCU institution so we are very proud of that and this also is just going to provide more opportunities for our students um, as well as faculty and staff members too. So we're just proud of what we're doing not only during this pandemic but it just speaks volumes on what we can do when we're not. Um, so we are, again, just really proud of the direction that we're going in. Um, our COVID rate um, actually is very well on campus. It's 0.001%. We actually were recognized on the news. Um, so you can definitely check out CNN. Our president, Dr. Tony Allen, was on there just um, explaining how we're keeping everyone safe on campus, um, which includes everyone, students, faculty, and staff members. Uh, we are required to wear our mask on campus 24-7. Um, we also require to get tested twice a week, and this um, is actually a free um, service that we provide for everyone. Um, since we have wonderful partnerships um, with the local hospitals as well as clinics, we actually get our results back within 72 hours. So again, uh, we're just ensuring that we keep everyone safe and that is their goal. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, definitely reach out to us. I am happy to share. Um, we did have um, our executive director, Mr. Kareem McLemore on our phone call, but he had to jump in on another meeting. So again, we are just so happy. Um, and our motto is that, it, it, again, it all matters and it truly does. So despite your situation, you definitely have a place here at Delaware State University. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, everyone who has uh, you know, introduced their schools. So again, 
Uh, the Opportunity Scholarship is only for our four uh, partner colleges. I do see a lot of questions in the chat box in regards to that. Um, I don't know, Sadana, if you would like to uh, maybe do that slide again um, that shows the locked out states, just so we can do like a quick clarification of that question, because it seems like we keep getting the same question over and over again. I just want to make sure that everybody's clear that this is only for locked out state students uh, that can apply to the Opportunity Scholarship. And then um, everyone else that it is not in one of the states can apply to our other scholarship program, which is called the National uh, Scholarship. Um, Sad, would you like to do a quick, um, just a quick run through of the opportunity one more time, like locked out states? Yeah, sure, sure. And I know it can be a bit confusing. So yes, the students coming from one of these states can choose from these four partner colleges which you've all heard are pretty fantastic. Um, and students not in these states can apply to our national program to attend a partner college in their state. So for example, a New York student can apply to our national program to attend one of the colleges at CUNY because we partner with the CUNY college system, which Hain also manages. Um, and so that's kind of how it works. We have this separated program. Now, as I mentioned before, I was an opportunity scholar before this existed, meaning I did not get $80,000 to move from Georgia to, to attend college in DC. I actually paid room and board out of my own pocket um, to be able to get my college degree. And Iris knows all about this because as soon as I was applying for the scholarship, I got the scholarship. I was talking to Iris almost every day about what this all means for me and what, you know, what I need to be doing, how I need to stay on track. So what you heard today is amazing from these advisors and admissions counselors and admissions liaisons is that they will work with students and dreamers to be able to, you know, meet the criteria and to make sure they have everything in order to attend these colleges. Um, so I just want to say one last thing before we wrap up. Our general guidance, our general message for dreamers and applicants at this time is you belong. So we know with everything going on in the world, in the country, you know, with the pandemic, some students might be thinking, uh, you know, do I even bother with college? You know, is this worth it for me? Maybe I should just work. Maybe, you know, it's too much at this time. We want to let dreamers and students know that they belong in college. So a college degree opens up careers that, you know, will enable them to advance in a way that they couldn't have imagined to support themselves and their families. And we know that any form of the DREAM Act that may come out of Congress, any legislation for protection for immigrants, will probably require a college degree or something of that sort. So the students are setting themselves up in a really great place once they start going to college to be able to reap any immigration benefits later on. And lastly, the Dream.us um, is more than a scholarship. So we're talking here about, you know, all of these requirements and these, you know, the dollars and everything. Yes, we do provide a, a significant amount of, of scholarship funds and the colleges themselves are also supporting you with their own institutional aid. But the Dream.us also provides um, career supports, graduate school supports, mental health. We have a dedicated wellness advocate who's available to our scholars um, to, to talk to in case they want someone to, to share their feelings and what they're going through confidentially. We have something called immigration office hours. So we have an attorney that has volunteered his time to hold office hours, virtual office hours every month for our scholars. Um, so there's many things that students and dreamers would get just, just apart from scholarship funds and attending one of these colleges. As Kevin mentioned, you know, their advisors work with them very closely. They make sure that they're not only, you know, attending and rolling in classes and showing up, they make, they make sure that they're thriving in these classes as well. Um, and, and overall, no one can take their college education from them, right? So they can take their degree anywhere in the world that they may want to go to. Um, and so that's the message we want to send out to dreamers right now. And we hope that you can help us share that um, with everything you've learned today. Please um, share with any eligible students and dreamers. Um, if there's any dreamers on the call, please uh, you know, go ahead, 
take a look at our application guidelines more closely, share it with other people you think that might be eligible as well. Um, thank you for helping us spread the word. We will be having an applicant info session in January. So a little bit closer to the deadline, we'll be having an applicant info session and I can actually drop the registration in the chat right now for you. So if you want to attend that one again and learn any more information or you this one you want to share with actual students and, and applicants who are going to be you know going through the application we'll be holding this one to answer those specific questions from students and, and scholars so you can go ahead and share that um, i see that the opportunity pcs are sharing their information as well please reach out to them that's what they're there for um, they're a fantastic team of people I completely enjoyed my Trinity experience. Um, and so that's it. I'll leave it up to Hayne or Camilla for any last words, or we can take any other questions that you have remaining as well. Yeah, I do see that there are a number of questions that are coming in the chat box. I know we're at time, but uh, the Dream.us team is certainly happy to stay behind and answer some of those questions because I do see some important questions coming here, but we understand we're at uh, time. So if you all have to leave, please feel free uh, to go ahead. But I do think I just wanted to quickly address some of these important questions. So for students in Georgia, correct, uh, you are correct, Kelsey, that there are two options. So uh, we have a unique partnership in Georgia. We do have a national scholarship partnership with Oglethorpe University. Uh, the stipulation for Oglethorpe though is that students need to be within commutable distance the university is in Atlanta. So I do know that it is recommended that students can commute. The National Scholarship, as Sadana mentioned, does not cover room and board. It is only for tuition and fees. So uh, this is one of the reasons why we encourage Georgia students who are applying to Oglethorpe to just be aware that if they do live far out and are accepted that they will have to cover their own room and board. Uh, that being said, we have many, many students from Georgia that come from different areas, particularly more rural and suburban areas outside of Atlanta, and those students typically apply to the Opportunity Scholarship. So thank you for that question. It's a very important question. I saw another important question here about where you can apply the scholarship. So if you do receive the Opportunity Scholarship, uh, as Camilla and Sedan emphasize, you can only apply for one of our four Opportunity Partner Colleges. One of the reasons why we uh, specifically work with these four partner colleges is because our scholarship does not cover the entire cost of attendance. So each of our partner colleges has been specifically selected uh, through a very special partnership because uh, the leaders in that state, the leaders at the universities uh, have truly extended this great partnership to be able to cover uh, the full cost of attendance and cover that gap between our scholarship and the cost of attendance at each of these colleges. Now, that being said, if you have a student in a locked out state who wants to apply for one of our other partner colleges, let's say for the national scholarship, uh, unfortunately, they are unable to do so. One of the key reasons being that for the national scholarship, if you go to the list, you'll see that the majority of the colleges are public university systems. Uh, one of the reasons why we do this obviously is for affordability, um, accessibility for students who live in these states and these areas. And so for these colleges, they must uh, be eligible for in-state tuition rates. So unfortunately, if the student is from out of state, uh, they will be charged out of state tuition and fees. Uh, and so our scholarship would not apply for those students. If you are from a state like Arkansas, a state that's not on the locked out list, but is still interested in applying, if you have a student in this situation, or you have a student uh, in a locked out state that simply just cannot commute, uh, we understand that students are very tied to their families and have a lot of home responsibilities. Uh, we suggest that they apply for the National Scholarship for our one online partner college uh, partnership. So we do have a partnership with Purdue Global Online. Uh, and it's a smaller partnership and it's a select group of students that we select, but those students can get the national scholarship, again, $33,000 total for tuition and fees uh, to attend Purdue Global Online. Um, so they can stay in their home state and pursue their college degree that way. 
think that's it um, from me just looking at these questions. But uh, like we said, we're happy to stick around to answer additional questions. Yeah, if anybody needs to leave, we completely understand. Um, if anybody wants to unmute themselves, the Dream the US will stay here. If you have any questions for us, uh, please feel free to just unmute yourself and you can ask us any questions. And thank you very much to our PC teams for being here and sharing about their colleges. I have a question. Um, okay, so I am the one that is in Arkansas. And so I have a lot of students right now that are DACA students and they are wondering about scholarships um, and grants that they can apply for since they are DACA students. Um, since they are only eligible, it looks like for this private online college. Um, do you guys know of other options for scholarships and grants for these students? Because I get asked that often and I'm not super familiar. Yep, so I actually put a link in the chat earlier. I'll put it again. So we work very closely with Immigrants Rising. It's an immigrant advocacy organization and they actually put together very comprehensive lists of scholarships and fellowships that are available to undocumented students um, across the country. So I'm gonna drop that list in the chat again. Um, and again, it's Immigrants Rising. So they also have, they have undergraduate scholarship lists and graduate scholarship lists too. So if you know there's any students that are looking for graduate scholarships, Immigrants Rising is the place to go. So let me just drop that again. Awesome, thank you so much. No problem. Anybody else have any question for us? Uh, I have a question. Uh, this is Navina Vamari um, from uh, Fulton County Schools in Georgia. Um, I was working with uh, one of my students through uh, the dream.us application and um, I did ask for the SAT score and had a little asterisk next to it. It's okay. I just want to confirm it's okay for the student to leave that blank then. Okay. Correct. All right. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from anybody left in the call? Um, I don't know. Hi, this is Ariel Gordon, um, counselor in Athens, Georgia, uh, Clark County. I don't know if this is uh, the right place to ask the question since this was about the opportunity scholarship, but I was just wondering if um, you had a little more information about Georgia students who can apply for the national scholarship and select Oglethorpe um, as their post-secondary institution. Who wants to take that one? I think you already covered it, Kane, before. So if you want to just do a quick redux of what you said. <laughs> Sure. Ariel, sorry. Could you repeat? Are you are you in Georgia? Yes, yes. I'm in Georgia, um, Athens, Georgia specifically. And you did you did talk about the the national scholarship a little bit, but um do you and I can check your website, but just wondering, like, does it have the same deadline, eligibility, um, or is it all different? Or and if it is all different, should we will you have a webinar like this for the national scholarship? Got it. So that's a Sadana question. All great questions. <laughs> yes, so um, good question. Um, yes, we will have a national scholarship session as well. Um, it will likely be in mid or late January. Um, and that does have a different deadline. So the national scholarship closes February 25th. So it's almost a month after opportunity. Great, thank you so much. I would be interested in attending that because for some reason in my mind, I thought being in Georgia, um, our students would only have the um, opportunity scholarship opportunity. So thank you. No problem. And what we'll do as well is we'll email all the attendees first the recording of the session, just so you have it. And then we'll follow up with all of these other dates of the sessions that we're holding. Thank you. No problem. Thank you all for being here and asking great questions. Do we have anybody else who would like to ask a question, take advantage of us just being here for you guys? All right. 
Um, I guess we can uh, wrap up. Oh, actually, oh no, that's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Um, if there's any any um, high school advisor left, uh, just putting it out there. I think that the best thing that ever happened to me, you know, was to get the opportunity to have a college education. It definitely changed my life, and you have the power to change the life of so many different people by just showing and sharing this opportunity. Uh, so definitely do that, do that for them, do that for our immigrant community, do, do it for people like me, you know, in Sedana that, that, that are so grateful right now to have had this chance to get ourselves educated. Um, so definitely push that on students. Sometimes they may, they may not have good grades, you know, they may be really upset about the fact that they think that they cannot go to college because they just can't afford it. Uh, it is a reality on our immigrant community. Uh, we just don't know what opportunities are out there. So you definitely are the only person who has the power right now to share that and provide that information. Um, so if nobody else has any questions, again, we want to say uh, thank you so much um, for being here and for you know sharing your questions and just having the time to, uh, to learn a little bit more about us. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Bye. Thank you.